In the last few videos, we've been looking at the binomial expansion for positive integer powers. We're going to continue that work and look at approximations where we have a positive integer power. In question 11, part A says find the first four terms in the expansion of 1 plus 2x to the power of 8. So this will be in ascending powers of x. We've got a number of different approaches that we can take. I'm going to use the NCR method to find the coefficients. So I'm going to write 1 plus 2x to the power of 8. This is going to give me 8c0. We'll have 1 to the power of 8, and then we'll have 2x to the power of 0. Then we'll have 8c1. We'll have 1 to the power of 7. We will have 2x to the power of 1. We will have now 8c2. We'll have 1 to the 6. We will have 2x, which we need to square. We'll have now 8c3. We'll have 1 to the 5th. We will have 2x, which we need to cube. And then we will have the other terms. You can, of course, use the 1 plus x to the n method to do this, or Pascal's triangle to find these coefficients. Entirely up to you. But if you've watched your videos prior to this, this should make sense. Okay, 8c0 is 1 times by 1 times by 1. That's just going to give me 1. 8c1 is 8. 8 times by 1 times by 2. Well, that's going to be 16, and we'll have 16x. Now, 8c2 is going to give us 28. We can find that on a calculator if we type in 8c2, and that's going to give us 28. Alternatively, if you wanted to work it out manually, we could write now that this would be 8 factorial over 6 factorial 2 factorial. So this is the same as saying 8 times by 7 times by 6 factorial over 6 factorial times by 2 factorial. Now 2 factorial is just 2. So we can see that for 6 factorials will cancel. We're left with now 8 times 7 over 2, which is 28. So 28 is 8c2. Again, you're not expected to do that manually like so. We've covered that in a, another video. Uh, but if you wanted to for the practice, you could do. So 28 times by 1 times by 2 squared. Remember, we need to square this. So 28 times by 4 is 1, 1, 2, and that will be x squared. 8c3 is 56. If you're unsure, just use a calculator, which is perfectly fine. You're not expected to know these necessarily. So we've got 56 times by 1 times by 2 to the power 3. 2 to the power 3 is 8. 56 times 8 is 448 x cubed and so on and so forth. So that's one way in which we could expand this out. Entirely up to you. It says now, by using a suitable substitution for x and the answer found in part a, approximate b 1.01 to the eighth and c 0 0.98 to the power of eight, whilst around each answer to four decimal places. So what we're doing here is finding an approximation now, of course, we could go ahead and just put this in the calculator. So 1.01 to the power of 8, that's going to give us our answer. So it's 1.082856 and so on and so forth. What we're going to do, though, is use the first four terms of the binomial expansion. Clearly, the more terms we use, the more accurate it is. And of course, if we went up to now the ninth term or the term in x to the 8th, we would have the exact answer. Um, but all we do is use the first four terms to find an approximation. So let's consider now what we would have here. So we've got 1.01. .01. All I'm going to do is set this equal to 1 plus 2x, as that's what we've done in the first part. It's saying that I need to use this answer right here and have some appreciation of a suitable substitution for x. So if I let 1 plus 2x be equal to 1.01, .01, what we can say is that 0 0.01 will be equal to 2x. And we can see that 0 0.005 will be equal to x. All I'm going to do is substitute this in. What we can say then here is that 1.01 .01 to the power of 8 will be approximately equal to 1 plus 16 lots of 0, 0.0 and we've got on here 0 0.05 let's put that there then we'll have plus 112 and we'll have 0 0.005 and that will now be squared plus 448 
and we'll have 0 0.005 which we need to cube. So all I've done is simply now gone ahead, found a suitable value for x and we're going to put it in. Remember this is an approximation. The more terms we include the more accurate it will be. So in a calculator, what I'm going to do now is put the following. I'm going to put uh, 0 0.005, and that's going to be my answer. Depending on how much work you need to show um, will be determined by the type of uh, teacher or exam board that you're working uh, towards or for. I'm just going to write it on the next step what it's going to be. 1 plus 16 lots of my answer plus 112 of my answer squared. And then we're going to have now plus 448 of my answer cubed. That is going to give me one point, let's write this down, 1.08, so let's jot all of these down, uh, 28, so 2856, 2856. So what we can look at now doing is rounding this to four decimal places. That's a fourth decimal place just there. So we're going to get now 1.08 and then we're going to have on here, that's going to round it to nine. So we're going to have two nine and that is to four DP. If we just store this in, let's just shift store A. If we look at the actual value, um, and we do 1.01 to the power of 8, then we can see the actual value. We can see it's pretty, pretty accurate, certainly in terms of the lower number of decimal places. Of course, if I was asked to do this to a higher degree of accuracy, having more terms would be better, um, but we can see that's pretty good. So all I've done is simply gone ahead, found a suitable value for x, and then substituted in. We can, of course, at this stage, find the percentage error between the real value and the actual, uh, the, the approximation that we found by simply using a percentage change formula. So if you ask for a uh, percentage error, you can simply do the actual value minus the approximation divided by the actual value times by 100. Um, in a later exam style question, we will look at doing one of those. So let's uh, now do the next one. So what we've got then is 0 0.98. So if we look at this, 0 0.98 will be equal to 1 plus 2x. Subtracting 1 from both sides, we'll have negative 0 0.02 will be equal to 2x. So we can see our value is going to be negative 0 0.01. And that is what we're going to substitute in. So in the exam, I would simply go ahead and write out that 0 0.98 to the power of 8 will be approximately equal to 1 plus 16 lots of the negative 0 0.01 plus 112 lots of the negative 0 0.01, which we need to square, plus 448 and then we're going to have now negative 0 0.01, which we need to cube. So all I'm doing is simply now substituting in as we did before. So if you wanted to and you were unsure on how to work that out, remember we got 0 0.98, we subtracted the 1, and then we divided by 2. And that now gave us the value that I'm going to substitute in. So what we'll have then is 1 plus 16 lots of my answer plus 112 lots of my answer squared plus 448 of my answer which we need to cube that's going to give us now 850752 so 850752 so we can say now that that to uh, 4 dp will be 0 0.8508 and that is given so 4 dp as this one was here so that's 4 dp as well if we look and we can store this in let's go ahead shift store b if we want we don't need a again but uh, we can uh, just leave it there so if i just put this in this is the actual value so we can see that isn't bad 
So we can see at this stage, it's now the five and the six that are different. So it changes on this decimal place right here. So that was our approximation. Okay, in part D it says, explain what would happen to the accuracy of your answers in or answer in part B and C if you use one, the first three terms and two, the first seven terms instead of the first four terms found in part A. Okay, if we only use three terms, the accuracy will decrease. So relative to the actual answer, it will decrease. If we use seven terms, which is more, it will increase. So if we use the first seven terms, then we're going to get a more accurate answer. If we use all nine terms, remember in an expansion where we've got now a power of eight, we're going to have nine terms. We're going to have the term independent of x right up to um, x to the power of eight. So if we use all nine terms, it would actually be the correct answer because we would be using this essentially. But because we use four terms, the accuracy isn't bad. Three terms would reduce it, seven terms would increase it, and nine terms would actually give us the correct value. So the more terms that you expand, the higher the accuracy. So there we go. That's some uh, brief work on finding approximations using the binomial expansion for positive integer powers. If you're looking for negative fractional or negative fractional powers, that comes in a different unit.